On his left hand was a bracelet. The number on the bracelet was zero. It was only then that Junpei noticed the stench of blood that filled the room. Warum hat er ein O an seiner Hand? Ich <lacht> nicht. <lacht> He couldn't help but laugh. There was nothing else for him to say. It was too simple, too obvious, too straightforward. If there hadn't been a dead man on the floor, Junpei might have thought it a joke. Oh. Ja, toten Mann entdeckt. Einfach direkt weiter. Ja. Gucken wir mal, wie wir herauskommen wieder, damit wir nicht beim toten Mann sein müssen. <lacht> Siege wir auch. Wir sind nämlich jetzt in den Captain, Cap Captain's Quarters. Captain's Quarters, da steht's. Und im Communication Office, dass er hier direkt angrenzt. Kannst du vielleicht einfach mal, steht hier nicht drauf, aber den, den Toten, die kannst du den, den Toten sehen? Kann ich den sehen? Nee, nee. Details, okay. Äh, dann nehmen wir mal vom Nightstand die Musikbox. Yay! Yeah. Oh, sieht das tatsächlich ganz schön detailliert. Und öffnen einen, den Desk Drawer. Das hier? Ich glaube, da war ein anderer Desk noch. Okay. Ah, yes. Ja. Hier gibt's mehrere. What's the deal with this? Is it some kind of code? There are four rows of numbers and letters. They all start with a zero and end with an eight. F N O V respectively. Maybe this has something to do with number bases. <laughs> Kannst du mal auf die, auf die Bildschirme drücken? Da steht hier auch nicht drauf, aber... This one shows the central oh. staircase on C-Deck. Oh. oh, krass. Ah, ja, ein, da ist der okay, ja. richtige Commander. Uh, select the keyboard. Ach so, sorry. There's a bunch of weird buttons on here. They probably switch what you see on the screens. Do you know how to work this thing? Uh, why don't we just press one of these? Like this one. <gasps> well, I guess it does change the... What the hell is this? Yet? Yeah, it's off the screens I'm on. Hmm. For the passbook I'm going to Heh. Junpei snorted with grim humor for the second time since he'd come into the sure. room. The four screens along the bottom had a single letter each, spelling out zero. Junpei felt as though he was being mocked. The real villain was somewhere laughing at him. What do you think? He turned to Clover, who was standing next to him. Her voice was almost too low to hear. Nothing. It seemed that she cared about little. Of course, Junpei could hardly blame her. Given the strain she was surely under, Junpei was somewhat surprised she had responded at all. Still, he had to ask. He gestured toward the corpse. What about him? Do you think that's really zero? Clover shook her head weakly. There's no way that's him. Didn't I tell you already? Zero is one of us. Yeah, right. Well, even if he wasn't one of us, there's no way that man could be zero. Huh? Don't you get it? The letters that spell zero on the TV screen, the captain's clothes he's got on, and of course the bracelet with a zero on it. It's too obvious. Look, look, this is zero right here. This is dead body is zero. Doesn't that seem kind of funny to you? You're right. Only an idiot would see through, wouldn't see through something like that. No, that's not the point. I'm not trying to make fun of them for thinking a trick like this would work. I'm sure they didn't think it would work. Which makes me wonder, why did they do it? I, d I think this is a challenge. A challenge from the person who's really behind all of this. He's making fun of us. Don't you get it? If whoever killed this guy really wanted us to think this corpse was zero, they'd never have put a bracelet on him. Walking about with a zero bracelet would be like hanging a sign around your neck that said, I did it. Anyone with a brain would be able to see that this guy is supposed to look like everything Zero is supposed to be, just like we did. The killer must have known we wouldn't think he was Zero and put the bracelet on him anyway. Do you know why? Why? Like I said, he's mocking us. Too bad, suckers. This isn't Zero. It's the same bad joke a lot of criminals like to play. They'll just sit back and watch people run in circles. Look, here I am. What's wrong, guys? Come on, catch me if you can. That's my favorite Tom Hanks movie. <laughs> really twisted. But it almost seems kind of childish. Yeah, you're right. It's really childish. It's like it's just a game to whoever this person is. That's what seems funny to me. Junpei bent down next to the corpse. All right, let's get back to the point. 
Who killed this man? I don't know. And what's this guy's deal? Who is he? How would I know that? If I knew anything, I would have told you. You have no idea who he is? Why would I? Hmm. Junpei sat back on his haunches and thought. We should check and see if he's got anything on him that might tell us who he is. Give me a hand here, Clover. What? We've got to flip him over. How else are we going to search his pockets? Clover didn't move. Junpei had no choice but to move the body on his own. He grabbed hold of an area not completely covered in blood and shoved. It took a moment, but eventually Junpei felt the man's bulk begin to shift. But just as it did, something fell from the man's left wrist. The bracelet with zero on the face. Lastly, let us discuss how to remove the bracelets. There are only two ways to do so. One, you escape from this ship. Two, your heart rate reaches zero. In other words, once the bracelet is taken outside the confines of the ship or detects that its various heartbeat has fallen to zero, it will shut down automatically. Junpei stared at the bracelet. This man, he's dead, isn't he? Huh? No, it's just, I guess I didn't really think about it until right now. If his bracelet's off, that means he's dead. Well, it's pretty obvious that he's dead. You don't really need to look at his bracelet to figure out that he's, that he's dead. Yeah, 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 I guess you're right. It is pretty obvious. He looks a lot better than the other bodies we've seen, though, you know? I mean, if there wasn't all this blood, he'd almost look like he was still alive. I mean, I know it's kind of a messed up thing to say, but he kind of has it better, you know? Dying from a bomb going off inside you. I mean, that's just... Some of Snake's bones went right through his skin. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Some of Snake's bones, you know, they went right through his skin. I think the explosion must have thrown him against the wall or something. Oh, there was a broken bone just <laughs> sticking out of his left arm. Suddenly, Junpei realized what he was saying. How could he have been so cruel? He clapped his hands over his mouth. Jesus Christ, Junpei! But it was already too late. He turned to look at Clover. She was glaring at him furiously. Yeah, sieht man. Oh, furiously, furiously, <laughs> wäre was anderes. <laughs> furiously. <laughs> what, what did you just say? Her words sounded cold. He knew an apology could hardly atone for what he'd done, but he tried anyway. Oh man, I, I am so sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I really don't know what I was thinking. I mean, no, that, that's not what I'm talking about. What did you say about his arm? A arm? Yes, his left arm. You said it, didn't you? Well, yeah, I did, but... I mean, didn't you see it too? Of course not. I could barely look at him. Clover took a quick deep breath. <gasps> Are you sure it was his left arm? Junpei thought back. Ja, offensichtlich ist er mm -hmm. Yep, I'm pretty sure it was. <laughs> Objection! <laughs> <laughs> And he had a broken bone, right? <laughs> What the hell are you getting at here? Just shut up and answer me! She shoved her face closer to his. He could see the fire in her eyes. Junpei winced and swallowed. Y yeah, he did. It was pretty bad too. The bone was sticking out of the arm. No sooner were the words out of his mouth than Clover's expression changed. Suddenly she was crying. Junpei wasn't sure what to do. Thank you. It was close to the last thing he had expected to hear. Junpei had no idea what had just happened. He didn't think he'd done anything worthy of thanks, and he couldn't understand why she would have chosen that moment to begin crying. So she si he simply stood there, confused. Thank you, Junpei. She thanked him again, and then something even stranger happened. Clover threw herself into Junpei's surprised arms. Uh, what's going on with you? I'm sorry, it's just, I'm so happy. Why? The body in the showroom, it, it isn't his, it isn't my brother. Huh? It's not Snake. Why on earth would you think that? Because his left arm is... She stopped herself. I'm sorry. I, I really shouldn't be talking about this. Junpei decided it would be prudent not to press her for any more information. If she did not wish to tell him, she certainly had a reason for doing so. Perhaps more importantly, however, if Clover was so certain, then she was likely right. That meant that the body in the shower room wasn't Snake. It wasn't much, but that knowledge lifted some of the weight from Junpei's heart. He's still alive. 
I'm so happy. Tears shone in her eyes. Those tears melted Junpei's heart. As she cried, she had pushed herself up against his chest like a child. Junpei put his arms around her and held her tight. Junpei, you were right. Hmm? No matter what happens, you can never lose hope. You have to remember what's most important and that's what's completely auswendig gelernt. To have faith and to have love. If you can remember all of those, that will bring you good luck. Ich glaube, das steht einfach auf diesem Clover drauf, <laughs> das sie ihr gegeben hat. Clover reached into her pocket and pulled something out. Auf der Rückseite bestimmt. It was a laminated bookmark with a four-leaf clover. I only made it here because you gave me this. I was suspicious of everybody and I was angry and miserable, but because I had this four-leaf clover, because of what you said to me, I... Junpei hadn't thought his words would have had such an effect on her. Her words were making him feel a little awkward. Thank you so much, Junpei. She looked up at him. He scratched his nose and pretended to notice something interesting somewhere else in the room. If you really want to thank somebody, you should be thanking Santa. Santa? Why? Well, he was the one who gave me that thing. And the words for each leaf, I got that from him too. Hmm? Then suddenly... Clover broke away from Junpei. Hmm? He looked confused. He hadn't thought she'd react that poorly. Clover began to piece across, uh, pace across the room. Six steps to the left, six steps to the right, another six to the left, and then she stopped. Did, did, did Sansa really tell you those things? Her eyes were serious, but not angry. Yeah, he did. Did I uh, say something wrong? Oh, oh, no, not at all. In fact, this could be really good news. I think. You think? Sansa knew about the words and the clover. The only people who should know about that are the other subjects. Subjects? Subject. The other people who were in the experiment nine years ago with my brother and me. But he's blind. And I was part of the Nevada test group, so neither of us would be able to recognize the faces of the people who were on his on this boat. Whoa, 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 time out. Junpei had up his hands. He took a deep breath and let it out. Let's just... Calm down for a second, okay? Start from the top. Don't start with the end and then jump to the middle. You gotta start at one and then move to two and three and four and so on. If you don't tell me the stuff in the right order, I'm never gonna be able to figure it out. Clover nodded. All right, let's start with this experiment. What happened on this boat nine years ago? Oh, that's why, yeah, sorry. Do you know about morphogenetic fields? Yeah, hat mir jeder siebte mal von erzählt auf diesem Boot. He did, and the realization sent chills down Junpei's spine. All right, how about this? <laughs> yes, flashbacks <laughs> to the highlights. Theory of telepathic mechanism. Junpei recounted what Lotus had told him earlier. Clover nodded. Hmm, telepathy, huh? Well, that's not really it, but I suppose it's similar. So they were testing telepathy on this ship? Yeah, I guess so. So what exactly did they have you guys do? The same thing that we're doing now. Exactly the same thing. What? The nonary game. Nine people were put on this boat and nine others were put in the building in Nevada and the game started. Junpei grabbed the sides of his head. Look, I'm sorry, but I don't get it. What do the nonary game and some telepathy experiment have to do with each other? Clover bit her lip. She blinked back sudden tears. What had happened to her in Nevada? The ability to access a morphogenetic field is affected by a couple of things. The first is epiphany, and the other is danger. You know how sometimes when you are up against a really tough problem, and then the answer just kind of pops into your head? Yeah, ich habe The Witness durchgespielt, <laughs> falls ihr das noch nicht wusstet. That's an epiphany. And what you learn from the epiphany can be transmitted with telepathy. When you add danger to that equation, then it gets easier to transmit that information over telepathy. So you're saying the nonary game was supposed to introduce the element of danger. Yeah, but it, it couldn't be just any old danger. It had to be life and death. And and someone did actually die. A girl. Junpei felt a sudden grip of despair on his heart. Something deep and distant and powerful squeezed and for a moment he felt very, very empty and alone. She was on the boat with my brother. I was in Nevada, so I never met her, but... I did hear her name. Her name was, um... 
The sound of the door opening was like a gunshot. God damn it, Ace, you suck. Junpei spun around. You're the worst. Oh, my apologies. I seem to have disturbed you once again. Ace, you two must have strong stomachs. I can't imagine how you could stay in this room for so long. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ace glanced down at the floor at the corpse covered in blood. At any rate, Junpei, would you be so kind as to come and help me with something? I'm having a little trouble and I could really use your assistance. Come on, it'll only take a moment. With that, he turned and walked back toward the communications. Okay, mal kurz den Namen, Clover. Ganz schnell. Clover waited until he was out of sight, then spoke in small, quiet voice. I don't want Ace to hear us. We can talk about this later. Huh? Hey, wait! Clover ignored him. Einfach in meinem Ohr flüstern. It's kein... From outside, Junpei could hear Ace auf. calling. Junpei, what are you doing in there? Hurry up! Ach! Ark! Grumbling to himself, Junpei stomped off toward the communications office. Ironie! Unsere Communications wurden gestoppt und wir gehen jetzt ins Communication Office. Und jetzt sagt er gar nichts zu uns. Nein, weil wir jetzt ins Communications Office mhm. gehen. Ja. Und was machen wir hier? Da gehen wir, wir gehen jetzt ins Communication Office. Wir sind wir da nicht gerade? Oh, hi. Äh... <lacht> Open the left side of the drawers on the desk. Also die, genau. Ja, ja. Hurra. Hey, what is this? It's blank. There's nothing written on it. Uh. Dann müssen da irgendwo äh, Screwdrivers sein. Also Schraubenzieher. War das Wort, was mir nicht einfiel? Ja. Okay. Ja, oh, yeah. okay. Dann müssten... Wir machen mal die Drawers auf. Yes. Okay. Ink. Und dann kombinierst du jetzt, ach ja stimmt, du kombinierst jetzt die Musikbox mit dem Schraubenziehern. Äh, äh, uh -huh. Alright, the scooter will order make short work of this music box. Dann kombinierst du das mit der Ink. Was hast du mit dem Papier? Ähm, um, I guess I'll put the ink on the cylinder. <lacht> Und dann das beides? Ja. Now I just gotta roll the cylinder across a piece of paper. And if I'm right, the ink should create a Morse code chart. Äh, oh, wir müssen jetzt diese Morse Code Sheet folgen, um den Desk Door zu unlocken. Da steht aber nicht, was das heißt. Mit dem Ding hier, oder? Ja, ne, rechts ist der Morse Code Ding. Okay. Hey, yes, look, it's a model of something. How on earth did you arrive at that conclusion? Okay, da rechts. Ach, das war's schon. Ja, okay, jetzt können wir das Papier gucken. Das ist ja kurz und lang, sind ja die zwei, die es gibt, ne? Ich würde sagen, es ist kurz, 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 lang, lang. Wie, wie rum ist denn hier eigentlich richtig rum? Oh. Das ist eine sehr gute Frage. Ich würde sagen, oben. Nee, nee, das ist auf jeden Fall quer. Mach's mal quer. Und das. Jetzt mal 180 Grad drehen. Jetzt mal 180. Ja, genau. So, oder was? Ja. Weil unten rechts ist eine Lücke, das heißt, das muss das letzte sein. Weil wenn das anfangen würde mit einer Lücke, würde es ja keinen Sinn ergeben. So, ja. Also ist es. Warte mal, ich wollte. Das war doch nicht ganz draußen. Obwohl, drück mal auf, es kann sein, dass es das angezeigt wird, wenn du auf den Morse-Code, oh. auf den Morse-Gerät gehst. Alright, I've got the Morse code I'm supposed to enter. If I do this right, something will happen. I hope. Alright, let's give this a shot. Und genau. Ah ja. Naja, okay. Bisher ja einfach von links nach rechts, ne? Genau. Was, was, was schreiben wir da gerade? Ich Keine weiß. Ahnung, ich kann nur SOS. Ich, ich weiß, also ich weiß nicht, aber ich weiß mit jemandem, dass es Zero ist. That's the last one and yes. Excellent work, Junpei. Good job. You seem to have figured it out. You've unlocked the drawer. Yay! Warte, nee, welcher drawer? Doch der. Oh, und da. Uh. A uh, red file so. lay in the drawer. Junpei reached down and picked it up. The cover read. Alice. All alles. All, all uh, mm. funktioniert das super. Uh, all eyes. Alice. Did that mean? Junpei couldn't hold back. He had to know what was in that file. Each page was covered with strange characters. They looked like tiny drawings of birds, snakes, insects, horned animals, wings, and even kneeling humans. There were many pages in the file, and each was full of those strange symbols. What the hell is this? He didn't ri realize he'd spoken out loud until Ace looked over at him. They are hieroglyphs, a form of writing used in ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt? That's right. Can you read them? Of course. I can't. What would you what make you think I could? What the hell? Junpei flipped through a few more pages. 
it wasn't just one or two pages that were covered in the strange symbols. Every single page was covered in them. Trying to read them was pointless. Junpei wasn't going to waste any more time with them. He made too close the fire. And something fell out. He bent down and picked it up. A key card. There was a symbol on it that reminded Junpei of the symbols for the Saturn and Mercury key cards. This one, however, had a dot in the center of the male symbol. Uh, Uranus. Uranus. That's the Uranus symbol. Junpei looked over to see Ace examining the card. In addition to the Uranus symbol, there were three words engraved on the card as well. On the lower right, it said bottom deck library. This must be a key to the library on the bottom deck. <laughs> <laughs> so it would seem. <laughs> the Smart bottom boy. deck. The library. Junpei remembered something he'd heard from Seven when they'd been in the chemical closet. Well, it sleeps in a small chamber past the floors of knowledge, beneath the navel of the gigantic. Did beneath the navel mean the bottom deck? Did forest of knowledge mean the library? If it did, then was Alice in a room somewhere beyond the library? What's wrong? Junpei blinked. Only then did he notice Ace looking at him. Curiosity and concern written across his face in equal parts. There was no reason for Junpei to hide his thoughts. He began to explain his theory to Ace. Then he stopped. It wouldn't make any sense if Ace didn't know who Alice was supposed to be. So he told Ace everything June had told him. About the Egyptian priestess, about Ice Nine, and finally about the woman who wouldn't melt, who had been recovered from the titanic disaster. He told him about how, he sh how she had been called All Ice, which had eventually turned to Alice, and how she had been purchased by an English millionaire who called himself Lord Godain. And how Godain had hit Alice somewhere on the ship. What? Hat er, das ergibt keinen Sinn, dass er gerade das beendet hat. Er hat gerade be beendet ja, ja. die Beschreibung, ja. aber warum? Ich weiß auch nicht, was für einen Satz, glaub, er, Satz er davor gesagt hat. <lacht> Ach so war das also. <lacht> and, you th and you think that her... <lacht> and you think that he hit her in a small room beyond the library on the bottom deck? Yeah, well, I mean, I guess so. I see. He stared off into the distance, his hand slowly and absent-mindedly stroking his beard. After a few moments, his hand stopped. He turned slowly to look at Junpei and his brows drew together. Junpei, have you ever heard of the term... CAS? CAS? It stands for Cells Alive System. It is an advanced technology for freezing and preserving organic matter. Put simply, it is a technique that allows one to freeze things without the formation of ice crystals. Normally, if you freeze something fresh, water within its cells expands it as it crystallizes, damaging the cell irgendwas. membrane. Action. Sorry. CAS, however, works differently. The object to be frozen is supercooled using magnetic fields and then frozen instantly and uniformly, giving ice crystals no time to form. It was originally developed for the preservation of food as an alternative to the normal freezing process. Now, however, there are rumors that it can be used for other things. What do you mean, other things? Well, there are obvious medical uses, but perhaps also space travel. Space travel? Are you serious? Surely you've heard of suspended animation, cryogenic freezing? It's a fairly common idea in science fiction books and films. Perhaps and sometimes fr people are sometimes frozen for especially lengthy journeys through space. That was when Junpei understood what Ace was suggesting. Whoa, 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 wait a minute there. Ace looked at him and raised an eyebrow. Are you saying that Alice was frozen using that cast thing? Well, I'm sure the possibility is quite low, but it is a possibility. If this special ice you call Ice 9 does indeed exist, and if CAS, ich wechsel mal zu CAS, were used to freeze her into that sort of ice instantaneously, you think she should she could be alive? Well, I can't say for sure, of course. I'm only talking about possibilities. The melting point for Ice 9 is 96 degrees, right? If she were put somewhere where she could reach that temperature, that's nuts! Are you really saying she could have defrosted and started walking about? You're quite right, it does sound unbelievable. But if she had, then we would have an explanation for the man we found dead on the floor. 
You mean that guy dressed like Captain? Yes. He was dead when we found him. Clearly he was murdered. But if he was murdered, then by whom? Whom is it to rise? It couldn't have been one of us. That would be impossible. In order to enter the captain's quarters, one must first open door number one. That door that requires the earth key prevented us from accessing door one. Who was it that opened that door? Santa and Lotus. Right. Clearly the two of them could not have opened door one or any other door for that matter. Who else then could have done so? Junpei thought for a second. No, nobody. After Santa and Lotus had used the Earth Key, they turned back and met up with Junpei and Jun, who had just returned from E Deck. The four of them then processed to return to the large hospital room to reunite with Alice, uh, Ace, <laughs> Seven, and Clover. When Junpei and his team had gone into the shower room, Ace, Seven, and Clover had been left in the large hospital room, but they would have been able they would have been unable to open door one. Perhaps when Junpei and Jun had taken the elevator to door 2, then? No, that would have been impossible. They had been gone only 5 minutes, no human being could have run to the captain's quarters, killed the man in there and run back in 5 minutes. It would be impossible for any of us to be the murderer, that being the case, who could have killed him? Wouldn't it make sense if his killer was someone who had been in the ship for some time? A person like that would know the ship well. They would know the locations of all the hidden passengers and secret doors. The numbered doors would mean nothing to someone like that. If all the Geheimgänge, die in Schiff normal waren, mm -hmm. it would be a simple thing for them to enter the captain's quarters. Then you're saying the killer was Alice? It was Junpei's turn to raise an eyebrow. Ace drew his thumb across his lips thoughtfully. Well, this is all only one possible theory. Ja, und das ist am ehesten die Frau im Eis, die aufgewacht ist und magisch noch lebt, statt einfach random jemanden, den wir noch nicht kennen. All eyes. Alice. Was? Alice indeed somewhere on the ship with them. Jumper had only one clue. The keycard in his hand. It would, he hoped, grant him access to the forest of knowledge. But beyond that, what awaited for him beyond the forest of knowledge? Whatever might be there, however, would have to wait. At the moment, there was nothing Junpei could do. He gripped the keycard tighter and shoved it deep into his pocket. New material has been added to the file screen. And here uh, is There is a key in the drawer. There is a key in the drawer. Why don't you pick it up? <laughs> Unique key. And then we will now with irgendeiner verschlossenen Tür. Uh, so. Is this here verschlossen? No. Die wahrscheinlich da hinter der Kamera. Drück mal auf die Kamera. A camcorder. It looks like it's pointed at the door. Where the power's on. Why would someone want to videotape a door? Da rein vielleicht? Keine Ahnung. The control panel for the electronic lock. Looks like it's got a key on the bottom. Right. Maybe the key I got earlier. Sweet. Just had to put that key in and now it's on. Junpei, look. There's a minus sign on the screen. There's eight of them. That probably means we've got to put in eight digits. Do you think you can figure it out? Uh, yeah, klar können wir das. <laughs> das natürlich. 35. Oh, eight hmm. digits, huh? Once I've put in the eight digit number, just press E to enter it. And if I mess up, I guess I just press C. So, 20.000 Mal. Das ist 34. Gerade hast du 35 gesagt. Ist auch 35. <laughs> Ich weiß du erst gleich, wieso ich das gesagt habe. 14. Warum liest du das so vor? Weil es hier auch so steht. 27. Ja, aber wenn man Zahlen diktiert, sagt man das 24. nicht so. 24. 4 und 20. <lacht> ja, eben. King of Queens. Da gibt es einen ganzen Text. Ja, ich weiß, Text darin da. muss ich da auch mal. Arthur, wenn du das... Das ist ja so ein lustiger Opener. Das bedeutet, 35 war Z, 14 war E, 27 war E und 24 war O. Okay, okay. Frag mich nicht, wieso. Yes, it worked. Good job, Junpei. Excellent, you seem to have unlocked it. Good work, Junpei. All right. Eine tolle Geste. Let's go. Das war ja von dem, was man machen musste, der wahrscheinlich simpelste dieser 
Nee, haben wir, wir, wir haben ja nicht herausgefunden, was wir hätten machen müssen, um auf Stimmt. diese Nummernkombination zu kommen. Irgendwas mit, dem, mit der Kamera wahrscheinlich. Ja. Steht da auch nicht, ne? Hier steht nee. nur einfach. Genau. Okay. 